Okay, in this video, I'll show you guys two ways on how to solve this first water linear differential equation. So I'll show you guys how to solve this first water linear differential equation with two ways. Here we go. The first way is called the integrating factor. And in order for us to use that, we have to make sure our differential equation is in the following form. Let me write that down right here for you guys, which we must have dy dx plus some function in terms of x. So just code that to be p of x and then times y. This right here has to be equal to q of x which is just like the rest of the things in terms of x. Whenever our differential equation is in this form, we can use what we call the integrating factor, which is given by the notation mu of x, which is given by the formula e raised to the integral power of p of x, like this. Yes, the power is the integral. Yes. And to see why this is true, be sure you guys go check out my other video for it. I will have the link in the description for you. And now, as you can see, in order for us to put this into that form, we just had to bring the 2y to the other side, which is not that bad at all. So we will have dy dx, and then we will just minus 2y here, and this is equal to sine of x. And that's it, right? We got this for now. And with that being said, we know p of x in our situation is just negative 2. Therefore, our integrating factor, which is mu of x, is going to be e raised to the power, and we have the integral, p of x is negative 2, and then we have to have the dx, of course. And of course, integrating negative 2 in the x world, we get negative 2x. So our integrating factor is e to the negative 2x power. Here, you don't need to worry about the plus c. If you do put down the plus c right here, you can rewrite that as e to the negative 2x times e to the c's power, right? Which is just a constant. And the deal is that we will actually take this and multiply everybody right here with that. If you have a constant here, everybody will have that constant. But this is an equation. We can divide everybody by that constant, so you don't need to see that constant anymore, right? So just don't put on that constant right here in the first place. That would be nice. Anyway, as we <laughs> mentioned it, we will take this equation now, multiply everybody by e to the negative 2x. And you will see, this right here is going to give us e to the negative 2x times dy dx, and then minus 2 e to the negative 2x, and then y, and then this times that, this is equal to e to the negative 2x times sine of x, like that. And now, here's the beauty of using the integrating factor. The left hand side is actually going to be the derivative of the product of two functions. Look at, we have this function times dy dx. And then you see, that's the function. You see, like, this is the derivative of the second, and this is the original second, right? This is the first function. This is the derivative of the first function. That's why I said this right here is the derivative of the product of two functions. So I will merge these two together for you guys. This right here will be the dx, right? We take the derivative of this being our first function, e to the negative 2x, and the y is our second function. Again, we can double check. If today you have to differentiate this, you first put this down, the first function, you keep it, and then you multiply by the derivative of the, uh, the second, which is dy dx, and then you are going to keep the second function, and then you are going to multiply by the derivative of the first. Derivative of e to the negative 2x is just this times negative 2 because of the chain rule, right? So that's what we have. Very nice. And then on the right hand side, this is still equal to e to the negative 2x times sine of x. Now, of course, we want to get the y by itself. y is itself the derivative. How can we get rid of the derivative? Yes. Use integration. Didn't we just do integral right here already? Yes, you have to do it again right here, right? <laughs> so go ahead, integrating, integrating, and put on the dx, dx. And now here's the deal. The left hand side is easy. Cancel, cancel. We end up with just e to the negative 2x times y. And when you integrate both sides, you don't have to worry about the plus c on the left hand side. Just put on the plus c on the right hand side, all right? Well, on the right hand side though, to integrate e to the negative 2x sine x, you have to use the integration by parts. You can use the ds setup for that. And 
you know, I will just tell you guys what the answer is, right? If you need more help for your integrations, be sure you guys check out my 100 integrals. I think this one is somewhere right here as well, or some similar ones, okay? So be sure you do that. But as I said, I will tell you guys what the answer is right here. The answer to this right here is negative 1 over 5 e to the negative 2x times cosine x, and then minus 2 over 5 e to the negative 2x times sine x. That's, you know, the, the integral. We'll have this right here for the answer. And now, here's the time to put down the constant. And we just need one constant, so I just put on plus e right here for you guys. Well, well. I want to get the y by itself, so we can just divide everybody by e to the negative 2x. So you go ahead and do that to everybody. Nobody will hate you, but you have to make sure you do it to everybody. Well, well, this and that will cancel. So we get the y by itself. That's very nice. So we have y as a function of x. Right here, you see this and that will cancel. This and that will cancel. Very nice. We get negative 1 over 5 cosine x and then minus 2 over 5 sine of x don't forget to divide you know e to the negative 2x right here with the c as well right divide the c by that right this is where you are going to get the constant part and if you have a initial condition which is we do right here we can use that to solve the constant but anyway this right here we can rewrite that as plus c e to the positive 2x like that so this right here is the general form for that differential equation. I'm not going to solve the constant yet because I'll show you guys the second way to do this now, right? So for the second way, in fact, we will also have to look at the differential equation in this form. It just happened to be the same form in this case. But the idea is that we want to look at dy dx and then minus 2y equals sine x. Again, this is the second way to do it. This right here, this method, only works if we have linear differential equation, meaning that y and the derivative of y and all that stuff, y and the derivatives, they have to be linear, right? So y to the first power, dy dx to the first power. We cannot put the y inside of the sine. We cannot have sine y, cosine y, whatsoever. Right? None of that, none of that. So that's the first thing. It has to be linear. Second thing is that the coefficients right here, they have to be constants, just purely numbers, right? They cannot be anything with x right here or right there. Earlier, this method will work if we have, let's say, negative 2 over x times y. That will also work for this method, right? But I'm not sure how difficult, how easy the integration step is going to be right here. But this method ideally will work. If you have negative 2 over x, or maybe like this multiply of x squared or whatsoever, the following method is not going to work, right? So you have to just check. And then on the right-hand side, you can have a nice function. And to know what nice is, you have to you know, just check out more videos to, me to see what I mean by that. Anyway, this is how we're going to start. First of all, we have to consider the right-hand side being just 0. So I will have to actually first consider the equation. This is called the homogeneous equation, meaning that the right-hand side is equal to zero. I just want to set the left-hand side to be zero, and I'll solve the homogeneous solution right here first. So to work this out for the homogeneous solution, we will have to do yh, right? And when you have the coefficients right here being just constants, you use yh being equal to e to the rx for your building blocks, right? So this right here, it will be the form to satisfy this differential equation. Okay, as you can see, we need a first derivative. So let me just differentiate this right here real quick. Y prime, and this is the homogeneous version. When you differentiate e to the rx, of course, e to the rx stays, and you multiply by r, right? And now you have it. You can just put this right here for the dy dx. And we have e, um, we have r e r x, and then minus two times y, which is that e to the r x, and then the right hand side is equal to zero. And our goal is to figure out for which r will make this work. 
From here, you see that both terms have e to the rx, so we can factor that to the front. So let's do that, e to the rx, and then you will see that we multiply by r minus 2, and this is equal to 0. Well, guess what? This is never equal to 0. So the only hope is right here. Of course, from here we know that r is equal to 2, and this is the only answer that we get, right? And then with that being said, we can just put the 2 back right here. We know that we only have one homogeneous solution, y h is equal to e to the positive 2x. Okay? Then this is it, because you only have the first order. Sometimes when you have the second or the third order, maybe if you just end up with one r value from doing this, you may have to do more things, right? Be sure you guys check out my differential equation playlist for more detail. But anyway, this right here is our first step, the homogeneous solution. Now, we also have to consider the particular solution. Because here's the deal. Earlier, when you do this, right, the right-hand side is just going to be 0. It has no way to produce the sine x right here. Now, we actually have to face the reality. We have to get the sine of x right here to the right-hand side. And this is how we are going to do it. This is called the method of undetermined coefficient to help us find the particular solution. And again, for the particular solution, we are facing the situation that dy dx minus 2y has to be sine x. And this is how we are going to find it, yp, for the particular solution. And this is not easy sometimes, but in this case, it's OK. Because we only have sine x on the right-hand side, and the homogeneous solution is e to the 2x. This and that are what we call the linearly independent. In another word, they have nothing to do with each other. Okay? But anyway, here's a small detail. If the right-hand side is sine x, then that means for the particular solution, we must have sine x and also cosine x together. Sine, cosine, they always help each other out, right? So let me just write down, we need to have sine x and also cosine x. But the problem is that I don't know the coefficients. They are known at the moment. And this method will kind of remind you of the partial fractions decomposition when you have the a, b, c, and all that stuff, right? We will be pretty much doing the same. And determinant coefficient means that we don't know what a and b are at the moment. So just put that down for now. And then we will also need to get y p prime. Of course, from here we can just differentiate this, which is positive a cosine x. And then differentiate this, we get negative b sine x. Right? And then the idea is that we'll just put this and that back to the derivative and then the original function. And then we set it equal to sine x on the right hand side. So now let's take this what we get. Put this right here, we get a cosine x minus b sine x. And then next we have minus 2 times y, which is this guy, a sine x plus b cosine x, like that. And of course, you are going to make this equal to the right-hand side, which is sine x, like this, okay? And then we're just going to combine the terms on the left-hand side and we'll equate coefficients. So as you can see, perhaps let's do the signs first. Why not? So here we have negative 2 times a and then negative b. You will combine these two together, right? So that will give you guys the new coefficient for the sign. So again, we have negative 2a minus b, and this is the coefficient for sine x. And then for the cosine, we have a, so let me put on plus a, and then negative 2 times b, so minus 2b, like this, times cosine. And then again, on the right-hand side, it's just sine x, like that. And now, here is the deal. As you can see, right here, this is what we have for the sine on the left-hand side. Here, we only have one sine x and nothing else. With that being said, we know this right here has to be 1. This is really similar to the partial fraction decomposition if you do it the traditional way, where you are going to equate coefficient. Take this, make it equal to 1. On the right-hand side, we don't have any cosine, so this right here must be 0. In another word, I'll write down a minus 2b has to be 0. So from here, we'll just solve the system of equations real fast. And perhaps let me just multiply the bottom equation by 2. And we'll see this is going to give us negative 2a minus b equals 1. And then this is 2a minus 4b equals 0. 
and then when you do this, of course, cancel this out, and then this is negative 5b equals 1. b is equal to negative 1 over 5, right? b is equal to negative 1 over 5. And then a will be, you bring this to the other side, which is a is equal to 2b, and you just double that. So in another word, a is equal to negative 2 over 5. And with that being said, you know that yp is equal to, you put this right here, that's the coefficient for a, so you just write that down. So you get negative 2 over 5 sine x, and then minus 1 over 5 cosine x, like that. Hey, look at that. I think we have the same answer, huh? Don't we? Isn't it? Anyway, in the end, this is what we call the superposition principle. You are going to just add the yh and yp together. So I will just write that down right here for you guys. The answer to this, y, okay, y is a function of x. y is equal to yh plus yp. So let me just write that down, yh plus yp. So in another word, y is equal to yh, which is this. And here's the deal. For the yh, this is the time that you multiply by a constant, right? Earlier, we just found the yh, but for the yh, you put down constant and just need one constant, and the truth is because you only have the first order. So c1, that's all. So we need just c. So multiply this by a constant. You don't know what it is yet. e to the 2x, and then you add yp, which is just all this. So just copy that down again. Negative 2 over 5 sine x minus 1 over 5 cosine x just like that okay so of course you can just erase this become the minus if you would like so that's pretty much that's pretty much the idea very good very good very good and of course if you want to solve for what c is by using that of course they're the same right and i'll just use this one i will put in zero for all the x and then putting one for the y right so let me write that down. And now let's do this in our head. 1 is equal to this. Cosine 0 is 1, so you have negative 1 over 5 right here. This is just 0. And then, of course, 2 times 0 is 0, e to 0 is 1, so you have c. In another word, negative 1 over 5 plus c is equal to 1. We will have to bring this to the other side. So we will end up with c equal to, of course, 1 plus 1 over 5 is 6 over 5. If you use a calculator, I won't be mad at you, okay? Anyway, in the end, you can just put on a C back here. So we get the final answer, y is equal to negative 1 over 5 cosine x minus 2 over 5 sine of x. And then, ladies and gentlemen, C is 6 over 5. And then we, we have the e to the 2x power. Right, so this is it. And as you guys can see, I showed you guys two ways on how to solve this linear differential equation. Right? We solve this linear differential equation with two ways. Let me know which way that you guys like more, the first way or the second way. So that's it. Hopefully you guys all like this video. And of course, be sure you guys check out my other videos in my differential equation playlist so you guys can get a lot more uh, math-related content and all that stuff. If you're new to my channel, though, be sure to subscribe. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. And as always, that's it.